Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another historical humans reacts and today we are talking about some more great discoveries coming out this time we are actually talking about the Iberian Peninsula uh, where there's uh, the first human representation of the ancient Tartessos people. Ah uh, yes, this is a this is a fun one. So, um, the Tartessos culture it's late Bronze Age, and it is um, it's very fun because it is a hybrid of uh, what would be the local indigenous uh, Hispanic people and the Phoenicians, because at this time the Phoenicians from their base in Tyre uh, have gone out. They are settling places like Carthage, which in turn makes very strong leaks with both uh, um, the coast of Spain and uh, the western half of Sicily. And so it's fun. This It's a very fun thing where we see this sort of migrant culture coming in and interacting in a place that most people really kind of forget it went to. Yeah, Iberia kind of gets left out of the, um, the Bronze Age kind of talk because... It's not generally the center of attention. Usually it's the Near East. Yeah. Or what we call the Near East, which is usually, like, for us, the Middle East. Um, yeah. Anatolia, yeah. Greece, Egypt. Yeah, like, if you're talking... Yeah, if you're talking about Europe and the Bronze Age, you're usually talking about either Britain or Greece. Greece because classical, you know, pre-classical Greek culture. And uh, Britain because that's where the tin came from. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Phoenician, it's, I believe it's, they believe it's Phoenicians that went out there, uh, bought mint or bought tin from the locals and then brought it back. Cause funny enough, there's not a lot of tin to feel the bronze age in the, in the middle East. Yes. And, uh, speaking of the Phoenicians, um, that we see, uh, with a lot of the religious stuff from this area, um, these people are worshiping Phoenician gods. Um, namely uh, Astarte and Baal, <laughs> no, oh, which are two, two, uh, two key, uh, uh, two key gods of the uh, of the Phoenician and I believe Babylonian pantheons. Isn't Baal and Canaanite too? Yes, Baal is is Canaanite. Uh, the Canaanites uh, shared what is, um, what is now the Levant with the Phoenicians. <laughs> And if you want to learn more about that, watch our Canaanite podcast episode. Yes. Uh, they also um, are believed to wor have worshipped the goddesses Astarte and Orpatnia. Along yeah, that's with what Baal. I just said. Oh. That's, well, that's what I, I, I said. I said, Astar I said Astarte and Baal, and then there was a debate about where oh, is Baal okay. is from. <laughs> as, we, as we argue the origin of gods that are multicultural. <laughs> ah, anyways, the relief <laughs> dates from the 5th century, so it's, it's pretty... Yeah. Old. Yeah, it's uh, th these are found. These were found uh in a sanctuary um, around uh, uh, uh that was well. There were a lot of animal remains, so ritual sacrifice of animals uh, uh is believed to have occurred. Uh, the reliefs themselves depict uh two female figures um with which uh. Researchers believe could be representation of uh, Tartessan gods. Um, you know, they, this is the first image of people that we have made by this culture, so it could very well be deities in um, in uh, in this temple context. Um, yeah, because everything was brought into the temple and it was burned, right, or buried. Uh, well, these were found in the temple, so presumably they were either representations of deities in the temple or offerings brought by people to the temple. It, the you know it has to end up in the shrine, yeah, somehow. <laughs> the uh, the thing I mean, though. Oh, sorry. I mean, it's not uncommon, at least from what I've seen in other contexts, where. Um, People, if they're being attacked, like a city state or something, might be attacked. If they think that, um, you know, the city's going to fall, it's not uncommon for them to bury, especially icons of deities in the ground to potentially be rescued if they could reclaim the city later. You see, that happened at um, Vey when the Romans took it. Yeah, that is true. Uh, however, I'm not sure that if these were 
buried because they people were trying to hide him or just buried because the temple has since been you know subsumed by the earth okay. yeah i mean natural um, soil acum accumulation plus there could have been potentially a disastrous event that caused it to be buried uh, what yeah, i also find this very is southwest spain so it's the part of spain that faces the atlantic so a lot of a lot, lot of, of good rain dust, yeah i just yeah. i find it interesting that they have these depictions and that they actually were able to identify one as being a Tartessan warrior. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah. this is our, our first representation of this group, but it's quite evident at this time, how developed they actually were, how they had mm -hmm. it, a lot of um, mixing and melting of the cultures together. Like, I just, yeah. I find that very interesting. Yeah. Plus the intricate metalworking. Yeah, this and, is what uh, real lost cultures look like. Yeah. Not that this bullshit. Oh no. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that's right. I, I want. I, I, I'm going to go back fight. to a different, different controversy here for us. So, I, I am no expert on the Tartessans, um, so I'm not going to question too hard the assessment that these figures found in a shrine are in fact depictions of deities, but. One of the things that struck my, that comes to my mind with these, you know, very human-like depictions uh, and clay uh, and clay idols and things, is um, a uh, sort of Greek practice, which we know the Phoenicians were also heavily in contact with and influencing and being influenced by, of um, bringing effectively depictions of yourself to a temple as in as a sort of offering, particularly if the temple was supposed to have healing properties um the votives of that among the most common votives in in greece is people's arms legs you know full little body statues for you know cure my ailments or you know you know help me recover from my injury hmm. and so just the, just the assumption that you know the two female images are deities um i would like to question that assumption to some degree because We've obviously identified one as a warrior, not a war god. So uh, they're... I wonder, too, if using that same logic, if they're trying to, like, bless this warrior as they're about to go off into battle. Yeah, bless this, you know, bless this, you know, warrior, bless this thing, yeah. So, like, because, like, it, it, you know, it said, you know, female deities and a, another one that was a warrior, not a, you know, not war god, and it's like, well, why is the male one not have to be a deity, but the two female ones do? I, I wonder if it, it has to be, like, they did a comparison for mm -hmm. the ones that they claimed. Like, they just saw some similarities, but that doesn't necessarily mean mm -hmm. that they are, it's like a one for one. I like, mean, it could also, let's let's not overanalyze it either. It could be something that's super easily discernible, where you can quite clearly see, because, I mean... The image shown shows two two reliefs. I mean, I don't know if the if the hair or the rings signify that. If there's something along those lines that would. It... Oh yeah, de definitely. There are there are things that are only depicted on gods in certain cultures. Like Zeus will always have a beard and a lightning bolt, no matter what. <laughs> and Hercules like the Maya with the were really mind. big on it too. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. There, there there could be things there that just aren't in the article. It's like. Well, it's obvious that this one was a god and this one wasn't because X. We, <laughs> but, but I would love to hear the reasoning from these archaeologists. That's what I want. I would love to have it. I would love to see like some of their if they do ever do interviews on it. I would love to see it. Aaron, we mm -hmm. could probably pull the academic paper for this. Someone please send this to me. I need it uh, because this is actually the first time I'm hearing of this culture, and it's. Uh, like Iberia, uh, Bronze Age Iberia is just poorly underrepresented. But at least, it's not. yeah, but I think that's a good point for us to wrap up this episode. I mean, without going too in depth, there's still a lot to learn from this culture. Yeah, there's a lot to learn about every culture, is basically the whole point of this series, and that we learn new things all the time because this is this is stuff that's just becoming news articles that we're seeing. Um, yeah. When in reality, we, these researchers yeah. have been working at it for years. Yeah, that's why we started Reacts was just, you know, what's coming out into the public eye now. What's, you know, you know, what's just finally getting out from behind the, you know, academic curtain. Yeah, but thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please check out our other content and we will see you in the next video.